Today is Maundy Thursday. It's the first of a set of three days which we call the Triduum, which extends from today through Good Friday tomorrow and into Holy Saturday uh, the day after. It's, it's a set of three days in which we really immerse ourselves into the death of Christ, the great sacrifice that he made, and the great love that he has for humankind. Today, Maundy Thursday, is a really special day uh, for me and for clergy in the Anglican Church because today is usually the day when we would go to the cathedral and we would all renew our vows. And so the vows that we took when we were ordained as priests or as deacons, today we would repeat those vows. We do that once a year on Maundy Thursday. Today is also the day where um, the bishop would prepare um, the holy oils that we use in anointing, as well as the chrism that gets used uh, for confirmation. And so uh, the Bishop Alan would have prepared these uh, jugs of oil and they would be decanted into small vials and each priest uh, would receive a vial that we can use during the year uh, for anointing of those who are sick, for example. But because of the coronavirus uh, national lockdown, of course, uh, we can't do any of these things. Um, and so we do them in our hearts. We try to remind ourselves today of uh, these vows that we will, uh, that we renew. But later today, we would also normally um, have a Maundy Thursday service in the evening. And the Maundy Thursday service celebrates two important events in the, uh, in the narrative of Christ's life. The first is the Last Supper, and the second is the washing of the disciples' feet. And these two are both commemorated on this evening uh, before Good Friday, because we believe that it was on this evening that Jesus did this with his disciples. And I want to suggest to you that these are both profound examples of the great, generous, extravagant, and extensive love that Jesus has for the whole of humankind, indeed for the whole of all creation, and not least for you yourself. The Last Supper is the time where Jesus takes bread and he breaks it, and he gives thanks to his Father, and he gives it to his disciples, and he says, take Eat, this is my body which is broken for you. And then he blesses a chalice of wine. And again, he gives thanks to his father. And then he says, drink of this um, until I return. When I, during a uh, Eucharist service, pass out the host, the body of Christ, I will usually say to people, receive the body of Christ, broken for you, because he loves you. And I always add that third, well, I usually add that third phrase, because he loves you, even though it makes it quite a long message, because I really want you to understand that when you receive the body and the blood of Christ, what you are receiving fundamentally is his loving presence. It's that he comes and dwells within you, which is also why we eat it, we don't just take it home or put it in our pockets or just look at it. We consume it so that what we're doing is we're taking in this great love of Christ that he demonstrates for us in his body and his blood. And sometimes when I put the host into a person's palm, I will press the host down, sometimes quite hard. You can feel people pushing back against me as I press it into their palm because I want, in a sense, to remind them that this is the body, this is the hand, the palm that was pierced. And although I'm not trying to make a hole in your hand, I am wanting to give you a physical sense that the body of Christ is being pressed into you. And then the other wonderful thing that Jesus does on this Last Supper with his disciples is that he washes their feet. And the narrative of this in John chapter 13, in the first section of John 13, is really quite profound. And I would encourage you to go and read it uh, if you haven't read it for a while. There would be a good reading to do uh, today on Maundy Thursday. 
Jesus takes off his outer garments and he puts on the robe or the towel of a servant which he wraps around his waist. And he gets down on his knees in front of each of his disciples and he washes their feet. Now we quite often emphasize the dirtiness of the feet that people would have had and how they were smelly and things like that and that might be true but I think actually it's not really relevant. What's really important is this great um, enactment of his humility that he comes not to lead, not to be the great powerful king, not to be worshipped and adored, but rather to humble himself and to serve humanity. It is in this washing of feet that he comes to every human being, whether you are an important president or an important leader in your church or an important member of your community, or whether you are a humble person who is working as a cleaner, or perhaps even someone who's unemployed and begging on the side of the road, he comes to you and he washes your feet. He comes to serve. He comes to make us clean. He comes to give himself for us. It is again out of the great love that fills the heart of Jesus that he comes to us as a servant. And so on this Maundy Thursday, as we get closer now to, Easter, to the Easter weekend, I'd really hope that these words will be empowered by the Holy Spirit so that they can dwell in you today and that you can mull over repeatedly during the course of today that God loves you deeply, extravagantly, generously, self-sacrificially. He loves you, you as an individual. And he comes to you today to say that he would like to wash your feet and he would like to give his body and his blood for you.